So yeah, we will be digging this out and doing a will it start once the ground dries up. It's kind of wet where it is. So, plus we gotta move this TR6. But all in all, car got the little western wheels on it. Little deuce of hairs at wheels. Uh huh. So, just stay tuned. So, finally, got the little TR7 to the house tonight. It's kind of late. Uh, I'm going to stick a battery in it just to see. We'll even turn over, check the oil and stuff, and uh, see what it does. It shouldn't be locked up. I don't think it is, but um, just to see what we're working with, and we'll get it inside, uh, go through the fuel system. Hopefully the brakes is not terrible, and... Uh, See what we can do with this little thing. Bring it back to life. So, just hang tight. I'm gonna see if I can round up a battery. It's full. I tried to grab the fan, but it's got one of those fan clutches. So, uh, I couldn't get down there to turn the crank. But I got the uh, boost pack. So, we're gonna hook to it see what it even spin over it'd be funny if it cranks but I doubt it let's see if we got any power I think the key is on already I didn't hear anything let's walk around here and see sometimes if those batteries are real dead uh, The boost pack won't um, won't let it crank. You gotta have a decent battery. <coughs> oh, let's see here. Yeah, that jumper pack shoulda. Did something, but I think the battery is just so dead. <sighs> Let me see, can I make another connection? So I put another battery in there. Let's just see what it does. Oh, I think it's in gear. Oh, we got lights. Trying to find the damn key switch. Oh, I believe you got to have your foot on the clutch. Well, that sucks. Unless the seat's soggy wet. It's going to be kind of hard to do. And the floorboard full of water. <laughs> I hope the clutch don't get stuck. Oh. Flickering. I didn't think these had a safety on it. Hmm. Just got flickering lights. Oh, the clutch pedal just went down. Went all over, let's see. Nope. Oh, there we go. Turns over. So it ain't locked up. Uh, does the lights come on? Uh, let's see, where's the light switch at? I don't know what that does. We're just gonna have to wait till the daytime or get it in the shop. But at least we know it ain't locked up. I wish I could get the 
lights to come on. No radio. That's the fog lights. Well, this says light. Oh, they just flipped up. Oh, I can't get out. Oh man, my pants leg got wet. We got one light. She's a one lighter. She's a frog. But like I said, at least we know it turns over. So I get it inside and uh, see about getting some fuel to it. Man, I forgot that it's got a four board full of water. That's fog lights. But it didn't shut off. That went down. Huh. Yeah, but it turns over though, so it ain't locked up. Cool. So anyway, that's gonna be it for now with the TR7 till we get it uh inside and be able to uh, see can we get it cranked. It's been sitting since 2016. So it's gonna need some love and some clean out. The cats have been in there. Backing the water out. Cause it's got water in the floorboard. And uh, got the dual carburetors on it so hopefully those are clean up it's got smog we even got air conditioning Leland cars air conditioning got brake fluid still in it so that that's probably good I don't want to hit the brakes yet though Let's see if we got antifreeze. It's got some in there. Yeah. So that is going to be it for tonight. It's been a long day. So we'll get this baby in the shop and uh, see if we can get it running and see what's up with the front end. He said something was bent on the front end, but I noticed it sits real low at the front. So I don't know what's up with that, but we'll get it in there and get it in the air. See if we can get this thing to run again. It's sitting up for so long. Pretty sure it's probably gonna need a fuel pump. Now, if you've been watching the channel, a couple of years ago I had two of these and uh, they were kind of crunchy one of them had a good engine been sitting for a long time one of them had a lot of rust so uh, this was the last one that I should have had tried to bring back but I didn't so we'll see what we're making run so just give it a thumbs up and share it. See y'all later. All right, so I got a little daylight today. We're gonna try and get this thing cleaned up. We got some rain coming, so I wanna try and get it pressure washed a little bit before I put it inside. Uh, and um, save us from having to do it when we get it running and it might be too cold or too rainy to, uh, to do it. So I'd rather go ahead and pressure wash it now. Get some of this tree sap and stuff off of it. So the sun's going down, so I'm gonna try and go ahead and shoot some water on this thing. And uh, try and go ahead and get some of this scum off of it. This trunk here has got some surface rust. So there ain't nothing I can do about that. It might blow off. 
Um, I'm not sure, but uh, let me get things set up and we'll try and get it cleaned off right fast. sponge and they just hold the water forever and uh, in the summertime that water gets hot boiling hot if it's real hot outside and it just cook that water on top of that paint it's like boiling the paint and then once it does dry it turns the surface rust so this was probably a real good paint job before uh for it set up so but it's got some spots like on the fender right here you can see it on this side right there and it's got some rust surface rust that can probably be touched up or something it had some uh, tree sap up here on the hood Still got a little bit more, it started to get dark, so I couldn't just really scrub it too much. But uh, like I say, it still looks pretty good. I don't know if this is the original paint. I would think it is. Being that the car is so low miles, I kind of cleaned up under the hood. Looks like original. This is, everything matches color wise. I don't know what that box is. That is actually a battery tender. Look at that. Battery charger maintenance. Huh. So if you hook onto the battery. Yeah, it's like a battery tender. That's what that is. I don't know what that was. Now I do. It's like it's got some kind of fuel shut off right there. Some kind of. Is that a fuel pump? Can't be a fuel pump. Looks like it's going into the mission system, I guess. Let's look down there. I don't know what that is. Some kind of pump, or maybe it's a uh, like a heater or something to heat the water. Like if it gets cold outside, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But uh, windshield's not cracked. Still need to clean up the inside. That's gonna be later. Need to get some of this water out of here. This floorboard is uh, completely full of water. Get the shot back and vacuum that out. It didn't just ruin that carpet though. So, and this top has had it right where the where windows is. That, uh, I think that's like a uh, nylon or something plastic. And the, the top is not ripped, it's just the windows is no good. 
Uh, yeah, starting to crack right here. So it's gonna need a top. But anyway, we will get uh, that air box off of there and uh, try and see if we can find a fuel line. Probably, I know the gas tank is going to be full of bad gas, but it's, it's not showing that much gas in it. So maybe they ran it so low that there's not much in it. But I don't know if the fuel pump still works. But we'll figure it out. So, but anyway, like I say, it's pretty much as clean as it's going to get. The little wheel's cleaned up. So, I'm going to uh, get things put up and uh, we'll try and mess with it here uh, next day or so, probably. Since it's going to be raining, it's probably a good time to go ahead and try and get it going since there ain't going to be very much nothing else to do outside but stand in the rain look crazy and it's going to be cold so never looked in the trunk what's in the trunk and I got a mother's probably, probably wearing a car show yeah. Grier's wrap uh, wipes. Year one muscle car parts. Yeah, this is something you wear in a car show. They give out goodie bags. Why is this in here? Now this is a right out of trunk section. If you get a bunch of leaves and stuff up here and don't let the water drain off, that'll start to rot. You can see it's a little rust right here starting. Surface rust. So you have to make sure you let these cars sit up under a tree. See this? You want to make sure that all the pine needles and leaves and junk like that is not in this, uh, not in this track right here. Because uh, it just holds the water. We'll get that out of here now. I blew some of it out, but I didn't open the trunk. But does it got a spare? Uh, yeah, it's got a spare and look like the original jack. So I don't know if the gas top. Well, we got the keys to it, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, we have to get the key to unlock it. This is all wet and rotted. That looks good up under there. That's the original color of the uh, carpet. Like I say, it's got AC, which is a plus. The MGs didn't have AC unless you uh, ordered a kit. Let's see what's in here. Uh, bunch of paper. We won't show anybody's personal stuff. Hey, there's a trophy. New Mat Matridge Matridge Fall Festival Car and Bike Show. Hmm. It was a show car. Nobody's name not showing. 80 Triumph, third owner bought new. Second 81 in Memphis. Five speed overdrive. And it's a bunch of other stuff I don't want to really get into. Some personal business. But we know it was a car show. I don't, I mean, a, yeah, a car show car, which I was told. There's a trophy. Whoopee. Factory AM FM radio. I'm telling what's in here. Uh, this 
more personal stuff you want. Oops, that broke. Oh, it was already cracked. It was just sitting on top of there. I will pretend we didn't see that. But it was already cracked. But yeah. Alright, so I'm going to get some stuff put away and we'll try and get to it either tonight or another day. Um, so I'm about to shake and try and turn my light back off. But uh, cool little car. So. Now I got a little bit more light, you can really see it. It's got a little shine going to it. You can see that tree sap that's still in there. Still kind of hard to get the lighting just right in here but pretty much see what you're working with with paint put some armor on it'll be all right we got the tr7 up in the air and um i'm gonna scoot up in up under there and let's see what front end damage that it might have um, that way we'll get this thing running we'll know what to look for going down the road and won't have no crash let's see uh you see anything mm, I don't see anything broken Plus we'll make sure we ain't got no wall's nest. I've been killing wall's nest. So everything looks to be. That brake ain't locked up. I know it's hard to push like. Like the brake is locked up. That one ain't locked up so it's got to be the back. But as far as the frame. I don't see any damage. Uh, everything seems to be intact. I don't know. Everything's nice. Well, there's a wall nest up there, but it's empty. This thing got a wall nest everywhere. I don't see any damage. Unless something's bent, we'll be able to tell when we go down the road if something's out of line or something tie rod ends look to be straight frame looks frame rails look good I'm thinking it's got a drain on the let's bring the light it's got a drain gas tank. I heard some gas in it. Dry shaft. Looks good. Rear trailing arms. Look good. Where's the gas tank? Oh, it's way up there. Ooh, in a bad spot. Let's get a light up there. gas tank is over the rear end so basically as I remember on the last TR7s I had you gotta drop the rear end to get the gas tank out that sucks but we're gonna try and drain it I think it's got an electric fuel pump cause I see it 
some wires going up there. On the sending unit, there's two wires, the fuel lines. So I bet you it's got electric fuel pump in the tank. Hopefully that still works. I did hear some fuel swashing around when I was bouncing on the car. We'll take the fuel line loose up by the carburetor and uh, see what comes out. Let's see if there's anything back here. Nice set of shocks there. Got a little fart can pipe. Fuel lines look good. Brake lines look exceptionally good. Of course, all this has been replaced. So, but the brakes are locked up somewhere. Oh, it's the back brakes. Well, this side over here turns, but this side over here is locked up. So we need to take that wheel off. Let's see, can we get that wheel freed up? because it's hard to push. But, I don't see any damage up under here. There's definitely no rust. The floorboards are gonna start to rust out of it because they were full of water. I vacuumed the water out. I need to just pop this plug out and then let it drain. But the floorboard's good. You can see where that one's wet. That one had the most water. So that one was fixing the rust out. I think these has got overdrive because it's got the overdrive solenoid up there. I think like the MGs has got overdrive. Oops, sorry. Oil pressure switch. Fram oil filter. Ooh. Slave cylinder looks good and don't look like it's leaking, which I pushed down on the clutch pedal and uh, it went down. I don't know what these wires are for. Going up there. As far as the frame, I don't know. I really don't know until we drive it. Maybe it needs a front wheel alignment. I don't know. But we shall see. We shall see. So I'm going to let it back down. We'll get a, uh, take the fuel line loose and see if that electric fuel pump works. Hopefully it does. Maybe we can get the gas to uh, drain out and see what it smells like. Alright, so I got the air breather off. The fuel line is right here and there's a metal fuel filter. So what I'm going to do is take this line off this hose and we'll hook the battery up, spin it over and just see if we got anything coming out. Oh man. That's been on there for a while. Let's see what we got. Hopefully, this electric fuel pump works. Hopefully, the gas ain't that bad. water in it. You. That fuel line's full of full of water. It ain't no gas. It's like water coming out. I don't know if you can see it. So I bet you the position of that gas cap, the seal's probably broken and it filled the tank up full of water. Let's just spin it over anyway and see see if we got anything shooting out hopefully that that fuel pump is good maybe we can pump all that water out 
or the product was set up and rusted. And things spraying out. I didn't hear the pump come on. I bet you that pumped and set up in that tank and got rusty. Really need to go back there and check and make sure. I don't know what this solenoid is for. Make sure we got power going to the fuel pump, but I bet you we do. But yeah, it's just water constantly falling out. Let's uh. Let's shoot it with some um, some uh, starting fluid. I know people don't like using that in brake cleaner, but let's just shoot it and see what it even hit off, and uh, then we'll know that we got a fire, and then we can go up under there and uh, check that fuel pump just for giggles. Let's just see what it does. Well, at least know the ignition system working. jumped off there. The slides in the carburetors ain't stuck. This one's a little stuck. These carburetors you have to put oil in these little caps right here and that's what makes the sliders slide up and down easy. Without the oil, the oil in there those sliders won't work right. We don't have any fire. I don't know if there's some kind of kill switch in there. So I guess we're going to have to pull the spark plug wire and see if we got any fire over there. If not, it's some kind of switch somewhere, a uh, safety switch or something that's not letting it uh, fire up. So let's go over here. See, we can uh, pull on these plugs. Spin it over. Keeping it from firing, that might be why the fuel pump won't come on. Set it right. Got some new wires on it. Set it right there, and I turn this light out. in here hit the we 
don't have no fire. So it's definitely a fuel switch or ignition switch somewhere like a kill button or something that we need to uh, look in the car and see why we don't have any spark. If I ground it there, what it would do. Let's see. Contact. No fire. So it's definitely something somewhere. It's cutting the firepower out. Let's look in here. See if there's some kind of hidden switch. That's the choke. That's on for some reason. What's this? What's this for? It's got to have some kind of kill button somewhere up on his dash. I don't know what that is. What is that? Oh, that resets the speedometer. Hmm. I don't see anything. It don't have a... It don't have a clutch safety switch. So, I don't know, maybe the mice has chewed a wire or something in it. I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some checking. Check the fuses. Where were they? I think they're over there in the glove box. But we definitely don't have any fire. Hmm. Unless this thing got points. I would think in 81 they wouldn't have points. But uh, distributors up under there. It's possible they've got points. Look at that distributor cap. And where's the wires going to it? Look like the distributor wire. Comes from here. All the way to over here to the coil. Here's your cool. This is the wires coming off the cool. Going into the car. That's going to the brake switch. That looks brand new inside. I guess let's go on the other side. I don't think this car's got points. I found the repair manual inside the glove box. No, that's electronic. It's got an electronic uh, distributor. So, it's got to be a kill switch somewhere. Because I don't know what this is. 
this is 12 volts. This is a ball, uh, battery tender. So I'm gonna get in there and look on the dash. It's kind of tight to hold the camera. See if I see anything. And if I do, I'll show you. So I cleaned the rotor button off with a piece of sandpaper. And now we got fire. Hopefully it don't crank up. My camera's sitting there. So I guess it had some corrosion on the rotor button. And uh, I decided to do that before I put the cap back on. So now we got fire. Now we can hook the plug wire back up. And um, squirt some at it now and see. What, whoa, squirt some at it now and see what we got. Hopefully. Hopefully now we got some. We should have some kind of fart or pop or something. If those plugs are good. system working but I'm thinking the fuel pump is just trash so what I'm gonna do this fuel filter is full of rust I'm gonna take this fuel filter off and uh, hook up electric fuel pump right here I can get it. Man, that thing is that thing is stuck on there. Hopefully those carburetors. That fuel line. is completely <sighs> look at that that's straight water coming out of there so the gas tank is definitely full of water I'm gonna have to cut that little piece off before I hook the okay. That ain't nothing but rust. So we know what the gas tank looks like. I thought it had a drain on it, but it don't. So let me get the electric fuel pump. to the tank after one damn thing. Should just be the hooked to this fuel line.
Okay, so got the electric fuel pump hook right here. The battery is right here, so I'm gonna have to extend some wires to go to the battery. This thing should work. Yep. You want to make sure you got your flow going right. It's got an arrow. Arrows facing the direction of you coming from the tank up to your carburetor. So you want to make sure your fuel is going in direction from the back to the front and you follow the arrow on the pump. So since this pump has got an arrow point forward, you want the arrow pointing forward. So I'm going to have to get some kind of wires to put on there. Get our cheater pump, I mean our cheater tank, right here, like that. Run a hose from here down to the fuel pump, and I'm going to get some wire to stand out. So this will be our hot wire. Here and just uh, hmm. guess we'll just wrap it on this battery cable for now. We can ground anywhere. So we're good there. So I'll probably just ground right off this battery. I think I'm gonna get a I think I'm gonna get a longer wire for the ground if I got one already made up. Make it a little easier to work with. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and hook the ground wire up to the battery and then we can just wrap that uh, battery cable for the positive, I mean battery wire for the positive, just wrap it around the terminal. Then if I need to, I can snatch it off real quick. <laughs> this is <laughs> pretty simple. Uh, other than uh, other stuff I be hooking fuel pumps up to this is easy fuel line just right there is one fuel line that's all you need that'd be good enough alright now I gotta get a piece of that's going to be the kicker because at one end of 3 eighths and this bottle I think it's 5 16 
squeeze it up on there but I think it'll work Luckily, we ain't got far to travel with the fuel line. I should put some clamps on there, too. Don't want no forest fires. So I got the brake freed up on the back. I don't think it was the mercy brake uh, lever that goes into the passenger side wheel got frozen when I pulled the mercy brake on loading it off the trailer. So uh, kept spraying some uh, PB blaster in there. And it freed up a little bit, but if I pull the mercy brake, it might uh, it might lock up again on that side. So hopefully, if the brakes work and we can drive it, uh, that'll free up some more. There's our fuel system. We even got a shut off. So now, I'm going to get some gas and uh, pour in the bottle. And we should be good. So let me go get some gas. Just hang tight. All right, got some gas. Let's dump some. Hopefully, the needles and seats are not stuck. That'll be enough for now. Turn the gas on. Hook up the fuel pump. Make sure there ain't no gas flying out of there. I think we need to leave it off for a minute. Sound like the needles and seats might be stuck. <laughs> I think the choke is stuck on. Alright, let's see what she does.
get our needles and see some stuff in the carburetor or Can't get to the bowls to tap on those. Hey, I made a run. <laughs> Can't get to the bowls to tap on those. Let me shoot a little PB blaster on that choke cable. Oh, that buzzing sound. Sounds sickening. Could you imagine being stuck? With that on while you drive, driving insane. I actually need my strong here so I can spread my head. We might have to hook up our starter button. That way I can spread and keep it going. So hopefully it picks up. I'm going to try it one more time though. drain the gas out and see what comes out of the bowl but uh it's definitely definitely not getting any fuel up there so what I'm gonna do is take this cover off and see if that carburetor has some drain screws and uh, I can tap on the bowls a lot easier also we can get get that cover off there uh, Check those carburetors out. Try and get them freed up without mm -hmm. taking them off and having to rebuild them. If they've been sitting with that rusty water in there, though, more than likely they're gonna have to come off. That is a stupid wrench. design craftsman ratchets like they used to this is the second one I got and both of them are skipping and they like brand new
don't understand it. Now we're good for taking the screw loose and that's it. You try to ratchet it skips. Unless you hold the you hold the little trigger. Bother these carburetors. Move that out the way. Now, do they have drain screws? Get to them now. I hear the gas shooting in there. Nah. I keep dropping the damn straw. This one over here is kind of stiff. Let's see what she does now. just start working in. Might have to pull a little oil in there too. It's got some in it. This one over here real sloppy. This one over here, it don't have no oil in it. Let's try to pour a little bit in there. That might do something, but I doubt it. Don't take that much.
Nah, stiff. Alright. Well, I'll give it one more shot. This is it. Carbs are coming off. Last shot before we disassemble. This thing sits so low. It's going to take me a minute to get them off there. So I'll try and show you how I got them off. I think they look kind of, they look kind of congested from here. You got to have a wrench to get in there. Man, that's going to be a booger. You got to have a wrench to get in there to, uh, turn half a turn so that's gonna suck but I'll see what I can do so so I made a boo-boo after I was looking there's actually a fuel pump on the motor there's no electric fuel pump at the gas tank there's a fuel pump on the side of the block right here and I got the electric fuel pump going into the fuel pump where it will come in from the tank. This line right here goes to the carburetors and it hooks here and you got these tubes that go across to both carburetors on each side. So that's why we're not getting any gas because that fuel pump is probably bad and it's not uh, accepting the fuel coming from here going to the carburetor. So I'm just going to take this hose off here and put it over here to the carburetor side and I think we should be able to fire up. I was just going to take the carburetors off which it looks like a real real booger barrel job. I can remember when I had the last uh, TR7s I was going to take the carburetor off and clean it and um, I ended up taking the whole intake off. <laughs> and that was even a job. So, I'm going to take this fuel line off. Probably got a whole bunch of pressure built up. Take it off the fuel pump and
This hose is so dry rotted. I might have to cut it off of there because it is so dry rotted it's not going to come off there right. Let me get something to cut that line with. So I get that swapped over and then we'll try and crank it. Alright, so let's hook the fuel up now and see what we got. Hopefully, this thing fire up and run. And I don't have to pull them worse some carburetors off. Because uh, they suck. As much as I tapped on them, they shouldn't be stuck. fuel going to the carbs but uh still won't start those carburetors are like uh uh you let me sit too long I ain't gonna work took that fuel line off nothing but rusty water came out so that means the carburetors are going to be full of that and they don't have a drain Unless I can take these bowls off with it, with the carbs on the car, but it's only yeah. might be able to get one of them off. Well, hmm. Just blew some black stuff out the fuel pump. Well, let me continue on with getting the carburetors off. That's all I can do.
Man, into the throttle is a booger bear. Can't do five things at once. I got the start button hooked up. So I ended up taking the bowl off the carburetor. I had to go up under the car and take the five screws loose. Now this is the uh, needle and seat setup. You can see it's got some uh, piece of trash hanging it closed. And the gas goes through the back of it and that is completely solid with rust. And here's the bowl. Look at that. That's old gas then turned into like, I don't know, kibble. <laughs> so I'm going to clean this up, get this needle working. Because once I took it out, I turned the gas on, it went flowing out. Uh, but it wouldn't come out with this end because this is completely gummed up. So. Takes a 14 millimeter socket to get it out. So I'm gonna try and drop that other bowl like that. If I can get it off and uh, get the needle cleaned, we should be getting gas up to the carburetor then. Um, the gasket actually stayed on the carburetor, so that was a good thing. So anyway, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. Oh, by the way, here's the float. I'm going to get that cleaned up, try to get that bowl back on and move to the next one and then uh, hopefully we can get this thing fired up and it'll run like it's supposed to. Fingers crossed because I really don't want to take those carburetors off. I sit here and studied it. It's, it's a nightmare. So I was only able to get that one carburetor straightened out. I couldn't get the bowl off the carburetor to the right if you look at it from this angle uh, there's some heater hose pipes in the way a bunch of hose clamps and do lollies so we get it fired up it's gonna be run off one carb I did spray some brake cleaner off in that fuel uh, line that goes into that carburetor over there maybe that stuff will set in there and free up the needle and seat I mean that this needle and seat and this carburetor over here was pretty plugged up so I don't know but we'll see what it run off one carb at least and um, maybe another day 
sometime or another, I'll, I'll pull that carb off. Like I say, they're kind of a pain to get off. You got to get in there with a little short wrench, and you only get like finger turns at a time. The best way to really get them off is to pull that whole intake system off and you got to pull the thermostat housing it's a bunch so but anyway let's see whether it run off this one uh carburetor and uh if it do uh that'd be great so i'm gonna turn the gas on well first let me turn the key on because i don't have the starter hooked up and uh we're using the trigger. The doggone fuel line. This car just don't want to run. The metal fuel line that connects the two carburetors. It's got a hole rusted in it. It's spraying gas everywhere. Great. So now I gotta fix that. Maybe I can just take a rubber, maybe a fuel line, and go over it. Ah, oh, this car. Really, really starting to get to me now.
Your hand ain't up there yet. Sounds good, but I'm not going to cooperate. Housing leak. Runs pretty good. Sounds like that carburetor might have uh, wakened up. I see something wet down there that might be. Oh, freezes. Oh, the gasket. I don't know if it's the hose. I think it's just the. Housing. Cool. We'll put some more gas in it, crank it back up. Temperature hand just starting to come up. Right. I don't know if the fuel pump started working well. It's got the mechanical fuel pump, but I don't have anything hooked to it. Look like it blew out a whole bunch of nastiness. Nastiness on the ground so I'm gonna see if I can tighten those bolts up and uh, put some more gas in it and uh, see what it even moves it sounds like it started idling kind of higher like it was idling off of both carburetors but uh, I idled it down some and then it uh, started kind of running I think it was just running out of gas is what it is so I'm gonna put some more gas in and fire it back up first I'm gonna see if I can tighten those bolts up this is ventilation going Get 
to see the walls. So that means there's some in there. Man, it would have been nice if I could have got to that, uh, that other carburetor, but like I said, I believe after running it, it might loosen up. Hopefully. Let's see if she fire up again. I'll put some more gas in it.
All right, my battery down on the camera, but before that, you can see that the headlights work and it does move, the clutch works. I don't know about the brakes though. I haven't tried to uh, press the brake pedal. That's the big thing. So I'm gonna crank it up, put it in gear, pull it forward a little bit and see does the brakes work. I'm thinking that other carburetor is starting to work. Sounds like it. I can probably hook the key switch back up now. I 
think it's coming out of the overflow hose. Don't be no fire. So, with that being said, that's going to be it for now. Uh, with the car, what I'm going to do next is uh, try and get a good fuel system rigged up. It's like I said, I can probably run it, put that bottle more inside the hood, but I really don't like that because if that thing turns over and gets on something hot, we'll have a fire. Unless I can leave it like that and just barely close the hood, but I'd rather just try and drain the gas tank and uh, hook up the fuel pump if it's any good. So, but for right now, I'm going to say it's running. Uh, it's not overheating. Clutch work, brakes work. Charging system seems to be working. So, um, we'll see what else we can get done with it to get it and we can actually drive it. If I can get that, uh, gas bottle tucked in there somehow. I'm just scared to drive it like that. I'm thinking it's coming out this hose here. That's the overflow hose for this carburetor. So that carburetor might not be working and the gas is just uh, backing up blowing by the needle and seat but like I say I'll try and see if I can get this thing where we can drive it if I have to I'll pull that car right off and uh, check it but anyway that's gonna be it for the TR7 I hope you all enjoyed this portion of it like I say I'm gonna try and get this thing road worthy again and uh, try and keep it cranked up if it's gonna sit Cause those carburetors are not fun to get off the clean so uh i just want to say thank you guys for hanging with me all last year and hello new subscribers uh hope y'all liking the channel hopefully this year will be better than last year i always try and do different things on the channel find different projects and stuff so Anyway, y'all like it, share, subscribe it. Again, thanks for hanging out, and I'll talk to y'all later. So, peace.